Good morning, St. Catharines. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, before we get started, let's just take a moment uh, to just be still. Um, yeah, so God can hopefully speak to us and we have the ears to hear him. Ezekiel 18, 27. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. So wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us, and O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's pray through Psalm 95 together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in, his, with, in, him, in with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the days of the temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest." Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So this morning's psalm reading can be it's, uh, Psalm 92. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most Highest, to tell of thy loving kindness early in the morning, and of thy truth in the night season, upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon a lute, upon a loud instrument, and upon the harp. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy works, and I will rejoice in giving praise for the operations of thy hands. O Lord, how glorious are thy works! Thy thoughts are very deep. An unwise man doth not well consider this, and a fool doth not understand it. When the ungodly are green as the grass, and when all the workers of the wickedness do flourish, then shall they be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art the most highest forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, lo, thine enemies shall perish, and all the workers of the wickedness shall be destroyed. But mine horn shall be exalted like the horn of a unicorn, for I am anointed with fresh oil. Mine eyes are also shall see his lust of mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear his desire of the wicked and arise up against them. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar in Libanus. Such as are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of the house of our God. They also shall bring forth more fruit in their age, and shall be fat and well-liking, that they may show how true the Lord my strength is, and that there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall ever be, world without end. Amen. So now we have our Bible reading. The Testament reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 to 12. The Lord your God chose you out of all nations on earth to be his special possession. It was not because you were more numerous than any other nation that the Lord cared for you and chose you, for you were the smallest of all nations. It was because the Lord loved you and stood by his oath to your forefathers that he brought you out with his strong hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know then that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, with those who love him and keep his commandments. He keeps covenant and faith for a thousand generations, but those who defy him and show their hatred for him, he repays with destruction. He will not be slow to requite any who so hate him. You are to observe those commandments, statutes and laws which I give you this day and keep them. If you listen to these laws and are careful to observe them, then the Lord your God will observe the sworn covenant he made with your forefathers and will keep faith with you. This is the word of the Lord. All right, let's pray before we get started with this. So, Lord, just thank you for your word and um, will you open our ears to hear what you'd have to say to us this morning and will you soften our hearts so that we can be transformed by your word. Amen. Well, let's just uh, jump right in with this. So the very first verse from this morning's reading says, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. So what does it mean to be a people, holy to the Lord? Well, we know that God is holy. And I, I just am reminded, I think of Isaiah's vision when he saw the Lord sitting upon his throne when these enormous angels were there and how they couldn't bear to be in the presence of the holiness of God. So they covered their faces and their bodies with their wings and cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. It's so hard, just it's impossible to imagine the extent of the intensity of that vision. But it does give us an idea of what holiness is. It's just absolute perfection. 
like nothing can be compared to it. Even these magnificent angels called the seraphim, when they were in his presence, they felt nothing but unworthiness and shame. So they tried to cover themselves up with their wings. But God called Israel holy. And if you've ever read your Bible, then you'll know that God's holy people rarely got things right. They were anything but absolute perfection. They were constantly rejecting God, not listening to him, and going their own way and usually making mistakes and then complaining to God about it. I mean, that's a pretty big chunk of what makes up the, uh, the Old Testament. God speaks, man ignores, and then complains. So when God calls Israel holy to the Lord, it's got to mean something different than the holiness as God is holy. Because God declared a few things to be holy, like marriage and the Sabbath and our tithes. And none of these things are pure and perfect within themselves. Like take the Sabbath, for example. It's just a day like all the other days. It's neither good or bad on its own. But God chose it and he set it apart from all the other, day, all the other days. He declared it as the day of rest and called it holy. But all these things that God declares to be holy all have one thing in common. They all point to God and who he is. So like the Sabbath, it reflects the, um, the day of God's, uh, that God rested in the creation story. And it also reminds us to trust that God will provide. And how marriage is a reflection of that covenant relationship that God has made with creation. And it points to the ever-serving relationship between the Trinity. And tithing, again, just challenges us to trust that God will provide, but it points to a God that has already given, given, given us everything that we have. The holiness of Israel was no different. They were set apart from all other nations to be that reflection of the love that God has for his creation. So God's intention for Israel were to make them into the people who would reveal God's goodness and love to all nations. And in a roundabout way, they did just that. Uh, like when they demanded that Jesus be crucified, they drew the whole world's attention to a God who had put himself through hell for the ones he created and loved so dearly. And also in a roundabout way, instead of Israel's reflecting God's love, they reflected all of mankind's sinfulness. So much was revealed in that moment when the mob was shouting, crucify him, crucify him. God's love was on full display, as well as just how wicked and far from God man has become. And please don't misunderstand me. I'm not picking on Israel here. In fact, I think this is all just a warning for us today, because the church is just is nothing but the continuation of the covenant promises that God made with Israel. So let's just take a look at what the rest of this morning's reading was all about. So after God calls his people holy and his treasured possession, he tells them that they are those things not because they are special or did anything out of the ordinary, but because God is keeping the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and through Moses, and the, the forefathers. God is staying true to his promise, regardless of how much Israel stays true to God. Then he says, Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his command, commandments. And then he warns them to be careful to do the commandment and the statutes and the rules that I command you. So rules, statutes, and commands. I mean, these are just so typical of the Old Testament God, right? As if there can really be a difference between the Old Testament and New Testament God. Because Jesus was pretty heavy on commands, too. There's a part of uh, the Great Commission that we kind of skim over. Now, we know the part, go and make disciples of all nations and baptizing them. We like And, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We, we like those parts. 
but it's the part in the middle of the Great Commission that seems to get overlooked. Jesus said, teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. So Jesus' final command to his disciples was the command to teach others all of his commands. But, but that's what the discipleship is. Observing the commands of Christ, living them out, and showing and teaching others to live out these commands as well. Now, we're not living under the law. And we know that through the crucifixion, God has boundless mercy, grace, and love for us. I mean, that should no longer be in doubt. And we should understand that living out these commands is not some sort of obligation. But we should be viewing these commands as a gift given to us to show us the way to live as we were created to live. How serious do we take the love your enemies command? Like how willing are we to go that extra mile with those who persecute and oppress others? Like being a disciple of Jesus is a constant challenge. But if living out the commands of Christ is an essential part of being his disciple and the means of being that reflection of God's goodness and love to the world, then we've got to ask ourselves, how serious do we take trying to live out these commands? But maybe a, a better question to start with is, am I aware of the commands Christ has given us? And if not, then can I suggest we start there? Let's get back into the Gospels and discover where Jesus is calling us to follow him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for placing that call in our lives to follow you. To drop everything except our cross and follow you. Sorry for all the times that we call you Lord, but refuse to do what you've asked us to do. The Holy Spirit, will you help us to fall in love with your word? And will you give us the courage and the faith to live our lives according to the commands of Jesus? Amen. Now, let's uh, pray through Psalm 100 together. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now let's proclaim the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, 
which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The collect for today, collect for today. Almighty God, to show us to them that be in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the, the way of righteousness, grant unto all them that are adamant, admitted into that, the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may eschew those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, and knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, dost from thy throne behold all thy do the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee, with thy favor, to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with grace of the, of the Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way, and do her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and, and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family, and do, and do them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone worketh great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may be truly pleased thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our ad advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time and one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Now 
we're near the end of our time together, but let's continue to our worship and song with um, Lead Us, Heavenly Father. saying the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore amen amen and have a great week <laughs>